Hi, my name is Anna, and every week I summarize a book for you. And if you are enjoying these videos, I would be so grateful if you could subscribe to my channel, like and comment on these videos. Engagement is what helps promote my work here on YouTube, and I really do appreciate it. Today, I will be discussing Raising Girls, How to Help Your Daughter Grow Up Happy, Healthy and Strong by Steve Bidolf. I've chosen this book because I have two daughters who are four and six years old, so I wanted to get some guidance on how to raise them. But I've actually particularly enjoyed this book because it made me reflect on my own childhood and made me realize that some key events people or things made a huge difference in who I became. While each girl is unique, there is still a journey that all girls need to make to grow up well. And there are five stages that all girls tend to go through. We will discuss each stage one by one and discuss practical things that us parents should focus on to help our daughters through these stages. Girls seem to be different from boys in the stages that they go through and the ages at which they happen. And we will discuss raising boys next week. Because each girl is different, the ages at which those stages occur are only provided as a guide, because they can vary quite a lot from one girl to another. And they also overlap, because nature is efficient and starts one lesson while the other is still finishing. As your daughter completes each stage, she comes to a decision about her life, which, if done well where she's loved and supported through it, will highly benefit her. These decisions are made little by little, combining many experiences, so we shouldn't panic about always getting it right. Each stage lasts for years, so we have lots of chances. And as a parent, what matters is that we don't give up. Let's take a look at each stage now. Stage one is from zero to two years old and is all about security. This is the stage when girls need to feel that they are safe and loved. It's through their parents comforting her, singing and talking to them, jiggling and tickling and loving them that girls come fully alive and realize that the world is a good place. This is the concept of secure attachment that comes naturally for most of us parents. But it's not just about comforting them. Babies need to be excited and played with so they can go into higher states of emotions and learn about the full range of emotions and enjoyment. So once your daughter feels secure, she can then go on to stage two, which is from two to five years old, and it's a stage of exploration. Your girl needs to know that the world is a fun and interesting place. This is when your daughter can start enjoying painting, creating, building, enjoying the world of animals and nature. If the people who love her share some of these activities with her, she will pick up on their enthusiasm and pleasure in making and doing. You will have taught her that life is an adventure. And most toddlers do that naturally anyway, so it's just about building up on their excitement and their curiosity. And this stage is actually even more important because she's a girl. Sometimes the limits that we put on girls are totally unconscious. And there was a study that was made on the way we talk to toddlers, and it was discovered that we actually talk very differently based on the gender of our child. So if it's a boy, we'll mostly talk about numbers, and if it's a girl, we will mostly talk about feelings. So it's about becoming more conscious of that and ensuring that we also talk to girls about numbers and counting. One of the most important things we should do is to avoid any toys that are simply just aimed at girls. The third stage from five to 10 years old is about friendship. Friends are important for most of us, but for girls, they are the oxygen that they breathe. By age four or five, most girls can play well together. Then when they start school around six years old, it's all about having fun, comfort, and company. Of course, friends can also be a source of pain and your daughter will need some help with this. Nine times out of 10, if your daughter comes running to you in tears, it will be because something happened in her social world. Boys seem to be so much more relaxed about it all. By late primary school, girl friendships tend to go into more emotional sharing. They will usually have one special friend. And the reason for this deepening in friendship in the early and pre-teens is because friends are part of the long journey away from depending on just mom and dad. As we become adults, we don't just become independent, we just become dependent on a wider range of people. And in girls, this is revealed in sharing secrets. Sharing problems, usually about family, is part of the bonding between these girls, to such a degree that quite secure girls will actually make up problems to show empathy for a friend who's having real stress in her family. 
So friendships start as companionship and fun, and as they grow older, it becomes more for emotional support, where friends are a real sounding board. There are many skills that are required to being a friend, and your daughter will need your help with this. The way you can do this is by first being a friendship role model. And then you can also have proactive discussion with your girl about what makes a good friend. She will most likely have a lot of issues throughout the years with friendships, and we shouldn't get involved all of the time. But if your daughter comes to you running and crying about some issues, that she's having, it's important to discuss it with her. The skill of strong, close relationships is one of the most important things you can give to your daughter, so it's definitely worth the time talking to her and helping her. Girls are often programmed and perhaps even have natural tendencies for being more helpful and compassionate, so it's important that we teach them to really listen to their feelings and their inner voice and to trust their judgment. Our goal should be that our girls are so secure and confident in their own judgment that they are only attracted to people peaceful, calming, and warm friends and partners. We really need to avoid them going down the path of thinking that their job is to fix other people's emotions or other people's problems. So what we can do is to um, teach her to speak up by modeling this behavior. And when she's younger, we can teach her to voice her anger by saying, I don't like this. And if your daughter is a natural peacemaker, it's important to affirm and value that, of course, but it's also important to teach her to be more assertive, to understand what she actually does want herself, so that she doesn't get used by her friends. Stage four is from 10 to 14 years old, and it's about finding her soul. This is a stage where a girl discovers her true self and what makes her truly happy. With puberty, a girl starts to experience a much stronger sense of being her own person, a separate and private self. She's far from being a woman, but she's no longer a little girl either. She senses adulthood coming towards her. There is excitement as well as fear and even sadness at the loss of the simplicity of childhood. This often makes her more reflective and somewhat more private. A girl at this age starts to ask herself, who am I? What do I want? What is my life really about? And her answers to these questions will guide her choices through the next decades in terms of choosing her career, choosing which peer group to hang around with, and choosing intimacy on her own terms. And the author tells us that the years between 10 and 14 years old are extremely important, more important than people realize. It's not something to skip over. It's a time of intense preparation. We need to help girls stay in this place and not rush into premature attempts of being grown up. They need more of our time, not less, even if they push our buttons and are becoming extremely difficult. This is when we ramp up our teaching, explaining, coaching, inquiring, and when we involve her in more demanding activity, preparing her to be the amazing woman she can become. So what can we do? There are three important things that we can be doing. The first thing is to take any opportunity that we can get to really listen to what she's saying and to get an understanding of her inner world and her inner thoughts. You will find that you will start to share more about your own experiences as a teen and your values and ideas, and she will be more likely to listen to them. The second thing that we can be doing is to help her find her spark. This term came from research conducted by Dr. Peter Benson, and he's believed that we all have a spark, which is an interest, enthusiasm about something, that if it is lit, can really help us become the best version of ourselves. A spark can be a skill or talent, like drawing, writing, dancing, a commitment, caring for animals or for climate change, for example, and a quality of character. And our job is to confirm and strengthen our child's spark. So the most important question we can be asking our girl at this age is what do you love doing? And really support them in finding and developing that. So even if there are obstacles that you need to overcome or people that you need to get on board, it's really important to focus all your attention on this. And it matters because Dr. Benson's research found that the discovery of this spark and the support of it affects some very important benchmarks. Children with spark do better at school. They are happier and more confident. They engage better with adults and they tend to engage in less risky activities. Another reason why developing that spark is so important for girls is that it widens their friendship group. Your daughter's spark may change through life, but she will take with her the sense of focus, application, self-belief, and creativity. And the third thing that us parents can do to really develop our daughter's soul is to find the right people and bring them into her life. And the only criteria you need to choose these people is that your own soul is drawn to them. And this can be teachers, coaches, aunts, grandmothers, camp educators. You need to choose women who are interested in your daughter and who see something special in her. 
The fifth stage, which is the last stage, is from 14 to 18 years old, and it's all about preparation for adulthood. This is when your daughter will realize that she needs to take responsibility for her life. The biggest difference between a child and an adult is knowing why you are in the world. And it's going to be about a lot of practical things like knowing how to earn money, how to manage your money, how to eat, how to shop, how to run a house. But there is also a powerful shift that happens. And the author tells us that between 14 years old and adulthood, a girl needs some kind of marker event, a rite of passage, an experience, or even sometimes a misfortune. So she comes to realize that she's at the steering wheel of her own life, that she literally holds her life in her own hands. This is a frightening realization, but frightening in a good way. By steadying herself and receiving the support of older women, she can leave behind childishness and be accountable, connected to consequences, and be more proactive in what she wants to bring in her life. And this can be a very challenging time for parents as girls go through their teenage crisis. But the author tells us that this is a time when we need to ramp up our parenting. We cannot be friends with our kids. We need to set firm limits, curfews, and chores are extremely important. Now that we have looked into the five stages, there are a couple of other points that the author makes. One of them is that because we are raising girls, there are some risk areas that we need to be aware of and he advises on how to navigate them. The first one is becoming too sexy too soon. Nowadays, girls are growing up way too fast and they have never been this insecure. And we have media to blame for that. Because of this media intrusion in our kids' lives, we need to be even more mindful of that and be more intentional about what we let into our house. Another risk area around image and looks is about body and weight. The author tells us that about 15% of all girls and women will experience an eating disorder at some point in their lives. It's a massive epidemic. And research has shown that the answer to this is to shift our focus onto health, enjoying food, and exercising our bodies. The book ends talking about the special relationship that daughters have with their mom and their dad. Mothers have the most important role for girls. They are the role model, the person that will have the most effect for 90% of girls. And this is because mothers and girls share the same gender. Mom is the person that teaches them what it is to be a woman. And if you remember a few weeks ago, I did the video summarizing the gifts of imperfect parenting. And what is very important to understand is that children will become mini versions of ourselves. So it's very important that we become role models as mothers. And we are modeling so many things for our daughters. The importance of doing activities for ourselves, having me time, having our own friendships, our own interests. We need to make sure that our daughters are seeing us moms take an interest in our own needs, our own health, our own interests, and me time. And we can actually magnify this role modeling even further by explaining why we do things. And last but not least, dads still have an important role because they are modeling what it is to be a man. And for girls, it's modeling what kind of men they want in their lives. That's it for today. Here is a summary of the book so you can take a screenshot on your phone. And if you have enjoyed this video, please leave me a like and please leave me a comment and introduce yourself. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and keep growing.